great pleasure right now to uh, welcome back to the show. He was with us uh, just about two years ago on uh, the Big Band Files. Great singer and musician and entertainer and uh, does what we do here in broadcasting. We'll find out about that. His name is uh, Steve March Torme, and he joins us by telephone today from the beautiful state of Wisconsin. And, Steve, uh, good to talk to you again. How have you been? I've been fine, thank you. Uh, yes, I, as they say, I've got a great face for radio. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Well, let's start with that, because uh, since we talked to you, uh, congratulations. You've been doing a show on uh, on the Music of Your Life Network, which plays uh, a lot of what we play here on this show, big bands and, and standards right. and, and jazz. Uh, how did that come about? Uh, you know what? I don't really know. This this was, uh, I got a call from management, and they, they almost... By accident, talked to somebody about this. Said, you know, Steve, if you have an opening for this, Steve would be very good at this. He's, you know, he's, he's actually articulate. He, he has stories he can tell. He knows this music. And as it turns out, you know, the Music of Your Life Network, you're correct, plays, you know, a lot of the great American songbook and standards and some other stuff. And they were using different um, different singers and musicians as hosts uh, and some TV people. Peter Marshall's one of their sure. hosts. Uh, Pat Boone, uh, a young uh, singer, pianist named Tony DeSere. Tony DeSere, I've had Tony on, yeah. Uh, Johnny Magnus, who's been doing this for a thousand years. Um, and they asked me, and they said, you know, it, we'd be interested because you've actually got some stories to tell. I said, yeah, I mean, if you if you want someone just to say, and this next record was recorded by Benny Goodman, we'll have more for you. I said, you can get a robot for that. Uh, <laughs> I said, but I can actually, you know, I can lend some stories to it and at least some personality. So... I kind of have to walk a very thin line be, be, between really being myself, which will get me fired with this, <laughs> uh, and you know, pleasing the affiliates. I mean, I had my, I have, I have a three-year-old daughter and a five-year-old daughter, and I had the three-year-old on as my co-host about three weeks ago, uh, and you know, I, I used her as a foil, and it actually worked. It was kind of cute. And uh, the guy who runs the show says, hey, i got no problem with that. He says, then maybe you might want to use that maybe for a segment or two instead of the whole two hours. We got a couple of calls from affiliates saying, you know, everybody's kids are probably cuter to them than they are to everybody else. <laughs> I said, all right, you know, the point taken. But, you know, I didn't abuse the privilege. And because I can pre-record it, it's not like I had a bunch of dead air there. So, you know, they do allow me to do kind of what I want. I can talk about basically anything I want. And I know people want to hear about the music, want to hear who played on the record, but I'm trying to give them a little bit more than that. So you, you're able to track that from your home studio then, rather than uh, yeah, I go out west? Yeah, I can anywhere. If I'm on the road, I can bring my computer with me and, and do it. And, you know, I'll mention, uh, let's see, with this week's show, we, we talked about a, a tune that came out in, 1940, in 1955. I said, well, of course, you, you all know that the Brooklyn Dodgers actually won their first World Series over the Yankees in 1955. So, you know, there's going to be somebody out there that's going to say, well, that's kind of neat, and there's going to be somebody else that's going to say, I don't care, but that's <laughs> fine with me. So, you know, I'm just trying to add a little something here and there. Well, that's great. That's kind of what uh, what I try and do this show, and, and and I think we talked before, I kind of emulate uh, WNEW New York. I think you probably listened to that because you've lived in New York for, for part of your for your life as but well. And, and did, sure. And they were masters of not only they just didn't play the records, but they had the people on that sang, and, of course, I think your dad was on that station many times and, and, and tell stories behind the song. That's what's interesting about this kind of music, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, most of the people that we do play on the music of your life, not all, but many do have a connection with my dad or me in some way. I mean, we, did a, um, we did a record the other day. We did Candy. We did uh, Dr. John's version of Candy. And uh, I said, you know, that was a hit for Joe Stafford, Johnny Mercer, and the Pied Pipers. I said, as it just so turns out, Joe Stafford and her husband, Paul Weston, were neighbors of ours in Beverly Hills. And oh, they had a son named Tim, who I ended up being buddies with. He's become a terrific guitar player and a record producer, and he and I are thinking of maybe hooking up and doing some music together. And I talked about the, those three blocks in Beverly Hills where, where we ended up moving to from New York. On those three blocks, it was Joe Stafford and Jack Benny and Lucille Ball. I became friends with you know, their son, Desi, because of that. Jimmy Stewart. I mean, it was it was show business royalty, and I was you know privileged enough to at least meet some of these people and forge some relationships. And to me, again, that's that's more interesting as a listener than just saying, "And here's a tune by Bobby Darren. Hope you like it." Right. Yeah. <laughs> And just again, for those people new new to us, uh, of course, Steve's dad was uh, was the great Mel Torme, and I just want to mention that for the two people that well, may not recognize the last name, but there's not too many, so. <laughs> not yet. His dad was Phil Torme, the plumber. That's right. Very fine plumber, though. Very fine plumber, uh, yeah. yes. 
<laughs> he's scattered, I understand, while he's while he fixed toilets, Phil Torme. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, people who have not heard me sing before, who haven't been to a show and say, well, wh- you know, why the two last names? Uh, my real dad being Mel Torme and my stepdad, uh, who's really, who really brought me up, was Hal March. Right. Uh, hence Steve March Torme. And for you know your listeners who remember, Hal March was the host of the $64,000 Question Show and was uh, an actor on Broadway. He did Come Blow Your Horn, Neil Simon's play on Broadway for three years. And he was a terrific guy. So I got, you know, I got lucky. I ended up with two terrific dads. He was one of the originals on uh, Burns and Allen, too. Wasn't he one of the original neighbors? Very good. Ab- absolutely. That's, yeah. that's right. Uh, I have some of those old kinescopes. Some, some uh, very funny stuff. They did that, didn't they do that show originally live, the, the Burns and Allen show? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, you either knew your lines or you didn't, and yeah. if a piece of the scenery fell down, you had lived. That's right. <laughs> yeah. okay, some of those shows, when you see them today, and uh, a lot are on YouTube, which I like watching right. there, you don't see that kind of comedy anymore, which is a shame, because those guys really, or women, they really had to know their stuff back then. Yeah, they did, and you know, I'm. I look. I, I'm brought up of a generation that's that's you know later than that, and I am not a, a prudish, you know, straight laced kind of guy. I mean, there's stuff that's extremely profane that I will laugh at, but you know, back then there were very funny people who didn't have to work blue, and I don't really care one way or the other. I, I make no judgments on it one way or the other, but they were funny. I mean, you know, I remember listening to. Um, uh, Hal, Hal March do a radio show from San Francisco. He first started out with a very funny guy named Bob Sweeney. And they did a show called Sweeney and March, a radio show, and it was extremely funny. And there wasn't, you know, there was there was nothing dirty on it. There was, there was no swear words or anything, just funny situations. Kind of like um, Bob and Ray kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. But great timing, very funny. Oh, yes, you had to know your stuff. You didn't get bailed out by, you know, multiple takes and, hey, stop camera, we'll go over, we'll do it again. You either did your homework or you didn't work. Uh, and I think that was true of both my dads. I've been, you know, asked many times what was the what one of the main things that you were taught or you learned from your real father. And I said, well, I, you know, we never sat down and really talked about music. Not really, because we didn't spend that much time together. I said, I've learned most of my stuff from both of them by osmosis, just by watching and really uh, appreciating their attention to detail um, and just doing their homework, being professionals. And hopefully that's the same thing I bring to a stage. And at least it's what I hear from audiences. They said, geez, you know, it's nice to go hear somebody sing. You can actually hear everything they're singing, and you've got great pitch. And I said, well, you know, you either care about it or you're going to be sloppy. And I said, I, I, I can't afford to be sloppy. 